I'm just scrolling on Facebook right now and there's a post from someone called Brian who said he's been using his MG4 51 Excite to power his fridge, devices, kettle and coffee machine for the past 36 hours because of Cyclone Alfred which hit the east coast of Australia between like Byron and North Brisbane uh, this past week. What? Let's see what everyone else says. Oh. I would rather live in the dark and have no food than have one of those in my garage. <laughs> EV hater. Hey, I'm Ellie from Awesome EVs in Australia, and this is actually an incredibly interesting topic when it comes to EVs, and that is powering your devices or appliances at home during a blackout. So I was unfortunately in an area affected by Cyclone Alfred as well, and I experienced some of the most intense winds I have ever seen in my life. I've never experienced a cyclone, and unfortunately my roof has a pretty severe leak in it. But apart from that, all is okay, so very grateful because there was a lot of damage due to trees falling over, the severe winds and flooding. The worst part honestly was losing power to my home. There was no internet reception and there was no mobile reception. And also in the lead up to this cyclone, everyone bought everything off the shelves of the grocery stores so we didn't have much food uh, although i did try to prep for the cyclone beforehand and what you need to know is at the start of the week no one was really sure how bad the cyclone was going to hit us or if at all and so i had done half of the grocery shop at the start of the week with this in mind so i didn't want to go overkill i didn't want to panic buy um, but i bought things like sausages and steak and a few different freezer things along with some non-perishable items that can go in the cupboard but when it got down to it all I had way too much stuff in the fridge and freezer that I did not want to go off or be spoiled by having my power out for more than three days. But the good news was this car that I'm sitting in right now, the BYD Dolphin Premium, it actually has the V2L capability that allows me to plug in appliances and power them. And as a part of my cyclone preparation, I made sure to charge this car fully before it even got close to making landfall. So I was ready to go. I got that right. Now I've plugged in different things to different electric cars before with this special function called V2L, which is vehicle to load. So it's taking your battery's power and sending it out to appliances or other items that you plug in. But I've never actually used my car for a power outage like this. So it was a really good real life experiment on how long can I last using the power of my car to power my appliances. Well, fantastic news. It turns out quite a while. To power anything with this car, you do need what's called a V2L cable. Now mine came with the car or you can purchase it with your car and I'd recommend getting one from your vehicle's manufacturer so you know it's legitimate. It's going to be able to handle the high load of electricity that it's outputting or at least inquire with a dealership of an EV where you can get a V2L cable if your car doesn't come with one. And then all you have to do is plug one end into your car and then the other end should have a regular AC power adapter, one or two plugs that you can just get and apply and plug it straight into it and then your car will start powering the device. As a side note, sometimes you might need to lock the car once or twice to ensure it's activated, this V2L ability, but then you're pretty much good to go. I probably could have found an easier way to connect it without having to do any damage to my home, but I ended up cutting a little hole in the fly screen of one of my windows and sending the cable through from the car. So I plugged in my fridge. My fridge was definitely off. The lights weren't on inside of it. It was definitely starting to get a little more warm and once I plugged my fridge into the car's V2L socket it lit back up and I ran it for at least 12 hours straight. <gasps> yes! That was the initial test and get this when I started my car had 96% battery and after 12 hours it only came down to 93%! What? I ran a fridge for 12 hours and my battery only went down 3%. Unbelievable! <laughs> Day two Oh my gosh, only 90%, that's amazing. Wow, this is fantastic news. I had this plugged in for pretty much three days and I think I took my car only down to about around 88% or something. I even plugged in a coffee machine briefly, made some coffees. You can plug in most appliances and it was just the perfect way to have all the creature comforts during a blackout and still have the peace of mind that your fridge is functional. And I was just so surprised at how much power it left still in the car. By my calculations, and this is in agreement with the MG owner that was on Facebook, the battery only went down by about 10% per day at the very most. 
coast. So by those calculations, you could at least run the car for five to seven days before it would run entirely flat. I think that's incredible. <laughs> and the benefits to using your car as a giant power bank or backup battery, well, Number one, it's not noisy. Most traditional petrol generators, and this is no hate if you use one, that's excellent, because there are pros to generators that use petrol. But the one pro for me was that it's silent. You don't have to listen to the generator humming all day. On the flip side, of course, this car can run out of battery. So you need to ensure that you only run it to a percentage where you still have enough that you can move the car later after the disaster or the power outage is over. Oh, we can't forget that generators can also be smelly and they require require refills of petrol. Now that's a pro and a con, right? Because if you run out, you've run out. But if you can get more or if you've stocked up on petrol for this occasion, you should be sweet. And some petrol generators are more efficient than others. I know from my neighbors, and this is not a judgment, but it's an interesting fact. They said their generator was using 1.2 liters per hour. I don't know if that's actually good or bad to be honest, but it sounds pretty full on. I would happily use a petrol generator through this kind of time though, because just to have power is such a privilege. This is certainly not a dig at my neighbors, by the way. They are so intelligent and kind and caring. They offered to throw a line over the, the fence if I wanted to plug anything into their generator. I'm honestly just quite sensitive to noise and smells and going through the natural disaster, like going through a cyclone, it was quite unsettling. So I think that would have added a lot more stress to my life. But in saying that, it wasn't that loud next door. It definitely didn't bother me from them but I just feel incredibly privileged to have had the alternative of using my EV as my silent backup battery. And you have to also, of course, consider you might not be able to recharge your car during a power outage or a natural disaster, but you know, if you think about it logically and intelligently, you just don't let your car run down too far. But also a very privileged opinion here is that I also have a petrol car. So with one petrol car in the family full of petrol and with this car full of battery power, ah, oh, you're unstoppable in a power outage. <laughs> it's amazing. I also wanna know it is very privileged to own an electric car where prices are still a little on the high side. Not so much for the BYD Dolphin. It's one of the most affordable electric vehicles and it's excellent. You can watch my reviews, but not everyone has an electric car and I can imagine some people watching this will feel quite angry because they didn't have access to an electric car and so it feels unfair and that's a fair call but I'm not saying this to show off. I'm just sharing this incredible new technology that I think is revolutionary when it comes to climate change and all these new natural disasters we're seeing happen more frequently, let's be real. And yep, there's a lot of unknowns with electric cars. It's still new, it's still kind of weird, it's a bit scary, but this was just so unbelievably fantastic and I am so grateful I had this car through this natural disaster. If I jump back to Facebook quickly, we also had another comment from someone named Glenn who said he had the EV6 running to his kitchen and ran EV appliances, power to his NBN box and had high speed internet through the blackout. He powered his house for three days and went from 90% to 72%. So again, similar figures there on battery consumption. So you're definitely looking at around 10% on average a day for one or more appliances. Another comment here says that Ash did the same thing with their BYD Dolphin, which came with a V2L cord, like me. Says, was very surprised how well the car handled the load of a fridge, freezer, internet, CCTV, Wi-Fi fans, TV, TV and some light. Because of the load limits, we moved some things around to run the microwave, air fryer, kettle and toaster, but not a big deal. We were using less than 10% battery a day. Decided that if we reached less than 40% was gonna pop down to the local fast charger, top up for about 30 minutes and get a few more days of power. But luckily we didn't need to, so we just went back to charging off solar. <laughs> This technology is incredible. The only sad part about this is that some people in the comments of this Facebook post were saying they have an MG or an electric car as well, but they didn't have the V2L cable or they didn't even really know about V2L. I can't believe it doesn't come with the MG. That's crazy. Something important to note though about this whole video about V2L is that not all cars have V2L. In fact, Teslas don't have it. I'm pretty sure. And in addition to that, if you haven't heard already, V2G is rumored to come to electric vehicles in the future as well, which is vehicle to grid. And that means you will have the ability to power your home through your car, not just in this appliance way, but in a more sophisticated and high powered way. 
Well, I've been rambling for long enough. Just wanted to share the good news and inform you a little bit about V2L. And this video isn't here to say electric cars are better than petrol. <laughs> it's so funny to me that this channel is all about EVs and yet I get these random people dipping in to comment that they'd still never buy an EV or who would want one or petrol cars are better. <laughs> I respect that. This channel is just here to simply talk about my experience with EVs, what I think about EVs and the benefits that EVs have given to my life. And if that doesn't work for you, that's totally fine. In fact, I think if that's your uh, opinion about EVs, you shouldn't get one because they might be a little too complex. I should stop talking, but I'm just going to say this before I go. You can like things without writing off the alternative. You can. You can like petrol cars and EVs at the same time. Do you hear that? Uh, anyone? <laughs> there are multiple people in my household. Some people own a petrol vehicle, some people own an electric vehicle. And you know what? I think having one of each is actually currently the ultimate move. I think if we had multiple electric vehicles, it would have been pretty epic in the power outage, but I also think there's merit to petrol, old school. Well, it was good talking to you. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, because you're, you're here now. If you got all the way to the end, this is how my videos are. Join the club. If you don't know, when people comment on YouTube videos, it actually helps the video have a wider reach. So comments and likes tells YouTube, hey, we should share this with a wider audience because people like it. So if you want to do anything to support my channel, just leaving me comments comments, hitting thumbs up and being subscribed is very helpful to me and I appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye!